Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a potentially really exciting discovery of what seems to be the first ever Circumtriple planet. But what exactly is Circumtriple? And why is this such a strange and unusual discovery? So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, starting with the idea of exoplanets we've discovered so far. So, as of today, we've discovered several thousand different exoplanets. The vast majority of these exoplanets were discovered by the very proliferous Kepler telescope. But in most cases, all of these planets usually orbit a single star, with most of these star systems looking something like this. But when it comes to the majority of the stars in a galaxy in the Milky Way, we know that approximately 50% or actually over 50% of all of the stars are binary. Kind of like what you see right here, this is the nearby Alpha Centauri. Although a few years ago it was renamed into Rigel Centaurus, so this is Rigel Centaurus A and Rigel Centaurus B. And many of the exoplanets have been discovered around these binary systems as well, usually orbiting one of the stars. But there's a type of an exoplanet that's extremely exciting and somewhat unusual, something that the scientists very often have trouble explaining. It's known as the circumbinary planet. A planet that orbits not one of these stars, but both of the stars at the same time. In the last few years, quite a few of these circumbinary planets have been discovered already, but why exactly is it that it's so difficult for these planets to exist? Well, it's really in regards to the orbital interaction between the stars. In binary systems, because of the gravitational interaction between the stars, they tend to create quite a lot of gravitational instabilities in the entire system. Now, a single planet can still exist around one of these stars, especially if they're really far away from one another, but in order to have a planet orbiting both of these stars, previous mathematical analysis has established that there's actually just a very specific area where a certain planet can successfully exist in a somewhat permanent orbit. But even in those areas, their orbital parameters would actually change with time. And so this is what we refer to as the circumbinary planet, sometimes also referred to as the Tatooine planet basically named after that scene from Star Wars where Luke Skywalker gets to see two stars in the skies of Tatooine. And in the last few years, NASA has already investigated several of these Tatooine planets and discovered that some of them can even be habitable and potentially have liquid water on the surface. And so a lot of the recent studies in regards to circumbinary planets have actually discovered that despite improbability and unlikeliness of these planets being possible, it seems that the universe has successfully created several of these planets that have already been detected in the last few years. But what about other stars? We know that about 20% of all of the stars in the galaxy contain three or more stars in the system. And a few years ago, the scientists have discovered the planet you see right here, known as Koi 5ab, which was the first exoplanet discovered in the triple star system. But as you can see from this diagram, the planet itself was orbiting only one of the stars, with the two stars here forming a binary, and then this binary forming another binary with a partner known as Koi 5c. Although here I need to clarify something. When we talk about multiple star systems, in pretty much every single case, in order for these multiple star systems to exist, they actually have to create binaries within binaries. So for example, a typical quadruple star system like this one right here will have two binaries orbiting around one another. In a quintuple or five star system, you'll usually have some sort of other formation involving a lot of binaries. And that's actually the only way that the stable multiple star systems can form. They still have to form binary systems. But one of the more intriguing and more interesting questions here is, but can a planet exist in orbit around three, four or five stars? In other words, can we actually have not just circumbinary planets, but circumtriple, circumquadruple, or maybe even circumquintuple systems with a planet orbiting around several stars at the same time in a somewhat stable configuration? Well, looks like we might have found just one of these planets. So back in 1949, the astronomers identified this unusual system known as GW Orionis. The system was unusual simply because of the emissions it had. Today we know that this is what's known as the T Tauri star, which are normally extremely young stars, less than 10 million years old, that are going to develop into actual star systems in the next few million years. Now normally these are extremely active, they have a lot of different types of emissions, but they also usually have relatively large circumstellar disks. But about 10 years ago, the observations from GW Orionis established that the disks here were actually really, really different. They were extremely unusual. 
So even though they might not look very unusual from this side, further investigations establish that there are three different disks and they're sort of more or less misaligned. And they're also extremely large. The distance from the star to the edge of the final disk is about 400 astronomical units, roughly around 10 times the distance of Pluto to the Sun. Although to be more exact, this here ends at about 46 AU, the second ring ends at 188, whereas the last ring reaches to a distance of about 338 astronomical units on average. Moreover, the disks also seem to be misaligned by about 137 degrees, with each of these disks also being relatively massive. This one contains about 74 masses of planet Earth, the second one contains about 168, and the last one contains about 245 masses of planet Earth, which will eventually turn into planets. And so the initial simulations from a few years ago established that a lot of this misalignment is very likely due to the interaction between the triple star system that's being formed right at the center. It sort of looks like this, like you see in the simulation from the European Southern Observatory. And so the unusual inclination of the disks here is very likely due to the star activity in the center, which makes this system one of the most gravitationally complex star systems that has ever been analyzed by the scientists. But the natural question is, can planets exist here? And more specifically, can actual planets form in the disks and remain there for billions of years? Well, unfortunately, there is no actual answer to this just yet, only speculations based on the analysis from this paper. And this is mostly due to the distances involved. This system is pretty far away, 1300 light years away from us, so unfortunately the scientists are unable to see actual planets in orbit here. But the recent study was able to confirm a very unusual speculation that seems to suggest that there is a planet here after all. They've confirmed that there is a substantial gap between the protoplanetary disks. The gap that would be very difficult to explain unless there was a planet forming there right now. And this is something that scientists have learned from a lot of other systems. Normally when you find some sort of a large gap between disks, that's because a lot of the mass here was absorbed by some sort of a massive planet that's being formed turning into a gas giant. But in the past, some of the studies have also suggested that this unusual gap formation could have maybe formed by the interaction, by the complex interaction of the three stars. And since we know so little about these complex systems and the gravitational interaction with them, and because of the complexity of gravitational interaction of stars, and also because of the complexity of triple star systems, in theory it would be possible to create some sort of a disk misalignment and some sort of a gap in the disk. But the recent study decided to simulate this using a lot of complex computer simulations and a lot of three-dimensional hydrodynamic simulations to establish that the gravitational forces created by the stars would not be sufficient to create something that we're observing in the system. On the other hand, their simulations show that a presence of a planet here would definitely create something that we're seeing, with the massive Jupiter-like planet very likely just being hidden somewhere in the gap between the two disks. And if the scientists in this paper are correct, and if some of the future telescopes are able to actually see this planet, it would obviously imply that we finally found the first ever circumtriple planet, and at the moment the actual math behind this is pretty solid. It does look like this unusual system known as GW Orionis potentially contains one of the first such planets somewhere around 100 astronomical units away from the center of the system, which means that the universe has actually found a way to create a lot more unusual planets than ones we thought would never really exist to begin with. And hopefully some of the future telescopes will be able to directly image this particular star system and directly detect this planet using some of the modern techniques. Nevertheless, a lot of these planets in multiple star systems are still kind of rare. To date, we've only discovered approximately 30 or so planets around a triple star system. And today it's believed that maybe about 2% of all of the multiple star systems will have some sort of a planet around them. But what exactly these planets look like and what sort of conditions they have on the surface, and more importantly if any of them can actually be habitable, is a question we cannot really answer right now. They're still very mysterious, they're still extremely poorly understood, and until future studies we're not really going to know what happens around these unusual objects. For all we know, maybe the conditions here change so fast that they can never really be stable. And so this is something that we'll probably discuss in some of the future videos once more studies come out and once we find something else unusual somewhere out there. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful present t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.